we want to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land where, wherever we're, we're viewing this presentation from, this, this briefing from. We pay our respects to the elders past and present and emerging. And we thank all First Nations people for their custodianship of this country over thousands of years, up to 65,000 years as, as we know now from the evidence. And we acknowledge that First Nations people's sovereignty over this land was never ceded and that treaty with them has never been negotiated. And so that remains unfinished business um, for our nation. So if we could share the slide of the Synod resolution. <clears throat> so just before I talk about the resolution, sorry, I've missed one thing. If you'd like to put in the chat, um, if you know the, the, the Aboriginal country that you're calling in from, maybe just say your name and the name of the Aboriginal country that you're calling in from and share it in the chat, that'd be great. So where has this briefing come from? As many of you know, in 2019, the Uniting Church Synod of New South Wales and ACT resolved to develop a Synod climate strategy. Um, and young people were heavily involved in presenting the resolution and its near unanimous adoption by our Synod. Um, the resolution, as you can see, expresses three commitments. Firstly, there's a commitment to do our bit to reduce our own emissions across all parts of the church. So agencies, boards, congregations, and also members. Then there's a strong commitment to advocate to all levels of government for emissions reductions nationally. And the final commitment, is to young people, is to stand with young people in their advocacy on, on climate change, including through the, the global climate strike movement. Um, after that resolution, uh, the Synod formed five task groups um, to implement the strategy in practice. One of those is a youth climate action task group, which is the group that's uh, contributed to and shaped, and shaped this briefing. Could I have the next, the session outline slide please, Dee? So I just want to give you a quick rundown of where he we're heading in the next 80 minutes or so. So firstly, we'll hear from Thea Ormerod, who's the president of the Australian Religious Response to Climate Change. Um, Thea very kindly has um, agreed to speak to provide an overview of our current, current energy use in Australia, and particularly the case for a post-COVID recovery focused on renewable energy. And look, we thank Thea and all the people who will be sharing their expertise and experience with us. Next, Reverend Dr. Chris Walker will tell of his experience of action on climate change and share a theological perspective on the place of prophetic advocacy as part of Christian faith and mission. And <clears throat> um, Reverend Elamani Toma'apo will speak about his climate concerns as a minister, as an activist around climate and as a member of the uh, Pacific Islander community. Then after hearing from Chris and Moni, we'll turn to the Build Our Future event and what we can do to support it. We'll hear some practical guidance on making signs, holding a gathering, joining a prayer vigil, ordering a church banner, and writing to your local MP. And thanks to Roel Suganathan, Miriam Pepper, and Dom Schu and uh, sorry, not Dom, it's me tonight, for sharing their thoughts and tips on those actions. And finally, we'll have some time to consider what actions we will take in breakout rooms, um, or help others to take. I guess that's the most important part of, um, if, uh, of this briefing, if we're to make the most of this critical time. So to finish this introduction, let me share two images with you. This first one is called Earth Rising, and obviously it's taken from the moon. We hear stories, don't we, of astronauts in space seeing this picture, this image, uh, for the first time. And they're struck by our planet's amazing beauty, but also its vulnerability and fragility. So this small globe floating in space is our only home, and from a Christian perspective, a home that's been entrusted to our care. And the second picture is a graph. It shows the various trajectories of increases in global warming, depending on how we respond now and in the near future. So business as usual, which is that top black line, commits us to four degrees or so of global warming with all the resulting devastating climate impacts that the scientists have been warning us about for at least 30 years. Even if we meet all our current pledges under the Paris Agreement, which is the brown line, we're still tracking towards about three degrees of warming by the end of the century. And remember, we are currently, the scientists tell us in Australia, about 1.1 degrees of warming, and we've just had the, most, the worst bushfire season 
in memory in New South Wales. Um, <clears throat> the green line, which is next, shows us where we need to be heading to get as close as possible, to get under two degrees and as close as possible to 1.5 degrees. And we know that that will require very substantial emissions uh, by 2030, much greater than we're making now. So both pictures, the picture of our Earth and the emissions trajectory we need to be on, will be affected directly by the post-COVID recovery decisions our governments make in the coming months. And it's those decisions that we're seeking to influence through our church's support for the next School for Strike for Climate event. So let me now welcome and hand over to Thea Ormerod, President of the Australian Religious Response to Climate Change. Thanks very much, Thea.